welcome to Innate Express Podcast. I'm Haig John, chiropractor in Melbourne, Florida. Our mission is to ground you in service and inspire you to serve at your very best. Let's get started. Uh, we just finished part three of As a Man Thinketh with Jenna Elizabeth reading. And very importantly, what I just really came to my mind was B.J. Palmer who said, the things we think, say, or do will change, of the lo- change the lives of millions tomorrow, millions of people tomorrow. The first word, the most important one is think. Think, say, or do, right? Think is the most important one, what's between our ears. Because if our actions, then it's our action, what we're saying and what we're doing. But if it's not matching what we're thinking, the thinking part comes first, actually. As a man or woman thinketh, right, so he or she shall be in her heart. And as we are within, and B.J. Palmer also has a pamphlet-sized book about the same as that that says, As a Man Thinketh, as well. Most of it is epigrams, and it's nice epigrams. We can pull that out. I found it the other day. I knew I had it. I wasn't looking for it, but I was thinketh it, that that it would come to me when I'm ready to get it. But B.J. Palmer, when he, he said, Think, say, or do will change the lives of millions of people tomorrow, My friend Pasquale, he said, it's today. We don't have to wait till tomorrow it never comes, right? Take action. We don't have to speak about it. We do. And a very good friend of mine, I spoke to her on on Friday, and she said, hey, you are a doer. You are just an action guy. And she's like, "I, I, I don't know many people like that that you are a doer, you put things to action, you don't talk about it, you just get it done. And I thought, you know what, it takes a lot of training really to get to that spot. I have been a procrastinator a good portion of my life, and I don't enjoy it. I realize the little things that I procrastinate about, right? Putting the screwdriver away after I use it. I, you know, I could leave it there and sort of look at it, push it around on the table, or a fingernail clipper. If I don't put the fingernail clipper back in the exact same spot, I'm trying to train everyone in my house that because everyone leaves things everywhere willy-nilly around the house. Well, and I, I, but that procrastination, that doing, really comes from, you know, or, or not doing, comes from that lack of thought. It is for the single moment. I'm going to get this done right now, and the next moment doesn't matter. I'll think about that later. Well, tomorrow never comes. Later never comes. It's always later and later and later and later, right? So when we're in the moment, we take action. We are the I am, right? The things we think first, I am changing my patterns, right? Bianca was trying to remember a little girl's name she met on the playground. She asked her three times. And she goes, ah, I can't remember that girl's name. And I said, well, you're really, really good at remembering names. It'll come to you. And instead of pre-programming her now, where many people say, I'm terrible at names, oh, this and that, you're saying it over and over again. You're pre-programming your physiology to be terrible at names. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Because I'm great at names. In the past, I have not been good at names. I have programmed myself to be better at names. So, as a woman or a man thinketh, as we're thinking that I am good at X, good at B, great at X, great at B, I am going to get this done, it is already created within my mind. When I showed you guys, um, you know, the work I've been doing for the past pretty much three years of building the uh, marketing club, building the success um, action plan for chiropractic is what it is, for chiropractors. I realize it's been a three-year journey for the adjusting seminars, for the, um, the mission trips. All those things are one thing for success for a chiropractor. All these different aspects, the Indigo Festival, bringing that to other chiropractors so they can do it. All those different things, right? 
that it was all in my mind. It just had to be put together into a solid state. I didn't talk about them until they were created. Once I have that created, have a team created, or even the people within my mind that I want to create as a team, then they started falling in line. Some people have come and gone because maybe logistically it doesn't work. But then the new people came in. New people come in. So as we thinketh first, it has to be think. Then it's said and spoken out. Now we could speak it out to our spiritual guides, to the universe, to God first, before we speak it to others, right? Now that's an important part, important part of the process, right? Um, and then we do the doing part. That is the action plan. We can also be part of the writing it down. We talk about that extensively, right? Write it down. What's the vision map? Where do you see it? How are the steps to goals? How are the steps within those steps even? How can I take action? I do three more screenings a month. I go on, you know, four more calls a week. I go do what I have to do a little bit more each day. Our visualization we did on Friday about abundance of things coming to us in every direction. How many uh, people, new people, did we have scheduled in the morning before we started? Zero? Uh, one. One scheduled, and we had nine by the end of the day. Nine new families coming into this office without having anybody scheduled prior to that, right? All of it was abundance. It was abundance and visualization. We didn't have a very stellar day of huge numbers in other directions, though. Like, I mean, we had a good financial day. We actually had a really good financial day, but we didn't have a lot of, it wasn't a very busy uh, serving day, okay? We, it was, it was busy, busier than most in the country, but with nine new people, that was about all I could handle, I have to say. My, my legs were tired, my feet were tired, my knees were tired. It was, it was work in service, okay? It was exactly what we needed. When Mother Teresa said, God wouldn't, doesn't give me anything that I can't handle, I just wish he didn't trust me so much. I mean, she must have been an amazing person. With these little bits of humor that she has, she must have been just an amazing human being. And she was, obviously, from what we see from her. But there's those times, everything that we are getting right now is what we can handle. What we can handle. That is very important to realize. The more we expand ourselves, we're able to handle more. We're able to, I don't like to say stress the system, but if you don't test it and you stay comfortable where you are, it's real easy there and it's real easy to be the victim and it's real easy to say, woe's me and poor me. But if we just make ourselves a little bit more uncomfortable, step outside of our box just slightly, right? Test the waters a little more. I can handle a little bit more. There have been times in my life, and it seems like many times, I can't wait to get through the teens. Finally, at 2019, we're almost through our teens, okay? I feel like that season's nearly over, thank God, <laughs> right? I'm finally growing up. Amen. That's a season for transformation, we had, I remember when we first bought our building, we, I mean, a build, a hundred year old building we bought, one year in practice, and everything needed to be replaced. Wiring, plumbing, we had to lift the building up, all kinds of crazy things. So much happened, and I thought, I just can't handle another thing. And then something big would happen right after that. And then our office would grow. That's an important thing to realize. Roberta will tell you the story. She's like, I just don't understand how all those things it would just get tougher and tougher and tougher. Then more income would come in through the door to be able to handle it, right? Because that's what happens sometimes. It's a financial stress. Mm -hmm. Things would come through the door. It would be the perfect timing, right? Not a moment too early, not a moment too late. It was all in divine perfection. Allowing that to happen and then labeling it and seeing it. The thinking worked. We had one time we had to take, I think it was, it wasn't a hurricane, but we were flooding around town, all kinds of things. It was like a big tropical storm. 
and we had to close for a few days. And I thought, I can't close. It was just a year in practice, just bought a new building, all these things. And people came in the day before we were closing and all paid, prepaid for all this stuff way in advance. And that's the first time that ever happened to me. I didn't have to ask for it. People just came and they supported me through the hard times without even knowing I had hard times, you realize. It was just there. All those things still happen to us. It's how we are clear between the ears. Reading the As a Man Thinketh, that's a big part of it. That was one of the books in my early transitions of really understanding what's between the ears. And the, the story I just told is really about the time I read the book, actually. Maybe I read it a few years before that, but I think I really started putting the principles into play. If that makes sense, right? So as we're clearing up the debris within our ears, the debris is from other people, from lack consciousness. Most of the world is in lack consciousness right now. I don't have enough health is the big one right now. I need to get artificial health from the outside. I need to conjure up potions to bring in wellness. Pharmakia means witchcraft if you don't really know that. And that's the word they use in the Bible. So pharmakia, pharmacy right now is ruling the earth with a level of wealth far beyond most nations, putting them into massive debt and owing to them, okay? The debt really has been paid by others. I am not a part of that. I could spend all my time thinking about it and then becoming the victim of it which we see a lot also in people trying to defend. And we do have to stand up for our rights, and I absolutely believe in that wholeheartedly. But when we also have to be able to leave it behind and serve, because remember, it's the thinking part, is the most powerful of all. Everything else falls in line once we have a clear vision. We're thinking more clearly, okay? I'm going to stop this one here, and then we're going to start a meditation in the same type, in the same genre, I'm going to just mark these as one and two. Make sense? Okay.